Yeah, Friday. Friday, the 26th of January. Hope everybody had an absolutely great trading day yesterday. My name is Chuck Fulkerson. Welcome to the Daily Market Commentary. Uh, We are going to do what we do every day. We're going to take a look at the market, some of the movements that happened yesterday. Uh, I actually got a little bit of feedback that people said they enjoyed uh, the commentary in the mornings, so maybe we'll try that for a little while. Um, I will uh, do my best to always have them up fairly early. Uh, before uh, before we really get into too much pre market movement, uh, depends on uh, if I get up and make it to the gym early or not. So, <laughs> um, for those of you that are new to the channel, welcome. Glad you're able to make it. Uh, what we do every day on the commentary is we look at the same ten to twelve futures markets. We draw some lines on the charts where we see that there may be trade opportunities, uh, and then we leave the lines on the charts. Uh, the reason we leave the lines on the charts is that it holds us accountable to the trades that we talk about uh, in the video. So. Let's go ahead and roll right into it. So getting started first on the S&P. So looking here at the S&P, let's uh, bring this thing up. So the S&P, we identified an area of a potential reversal yesterday. Uh, well, we actually had identified it earlier in the week and got a really nice move off of that reversal and have been unable to break through that area. You know, what's funny is that I had uh, had said we're not going to be willing to short this all-time high, and then look at what happened. We got a nice little move off the all-time high. But, uh, you know, like I say almost every day I don't short the all-time high and I don't spit into the spit in the wind or pull on Superman's cape it doesn't make any sense to do that so um, I would be okay if somebody took a break out long at this area again because it's it really is reminiscent in our setup right now of what we had uh, I guess the uh, the positioning would be this breakout above here where we got a breakout high uh, this breakout here where we got a nice little high and whenever we keep getting the same kind of area hit on multiple occasions, it does lend itself to a potential breakout long. So if you wanted to take a breakout long above this area, I wouldn't be uh, opposed to that as an opportunity. Looking at the NASDAQ, now the NASDAQ is a bit weaker. So keep that in mind. The NASDAQ is a bit weaker than the S&P. And so with that bit weaker NASDAQ, um, you know, yesterday I had outlined that there's still a trade opportunity here. We almost got back into it and were unable to do so uh, in the uh, at the end of the day yesterday. But we did uh, rally up from that area. I am going to remove this trade. I don't really like the NASDAQ area here any longer. Uh, I think that uh, I think that by almost getting there and not being able to, unable to do it, I don't like it. I also don't like the fact that we've got lower swing highs. So uh, I think that today in, in my, you know, if I were looking at this, now by the way, once again, I'm not willing to short it. But I think that we could get a little bit of a profit-taking pullback today. Today could be one of those days where it might make sense to take some off the table um, as you head into a weekend. Just a thought. Um, Crude oil. So crude oil has continued uh, to rally up off of the level that we had looked at and identified. You know, what's funny is that yesterday I had seen this area here and kind of thought about it as a potential opportunity didn't uh, didn't take it, which is why it worked perfectly. Um, so uh, in the meantime, I do think though that we could get a little small time frame reversal off of this area up here. When I move to a 15 minute chart, um, we could get a little reversal off this area right here. So for those of you that are interested in um, small time period reversals. Look at this area here as a potential. I'm going to change this. Remember, whenever we do um, small time frames, we use the purple uh, lines. And the reason we use purple lines is because it's a slightly lower degree of probability. So a slightly lower degree of probability uh, whenever we go to a smaller time frame. So keep that in mind. Gold. Um, yesterday, we talked about a potential uh, breakout short opportunity in the uh, in the gold markets, and that thing worked out really, really well in a very, very let's call it a violent manner, where we had a very strong move down, came uh, came to an area which would be a very good uh, you know potential target for that. Uh, you know, we still have a reversal trade down here on the 15 minute time period, uh, but your, ta- your target is going to be the opposing fair price area and our fair price area would be right here. So that hourly trade in gold on a breakout to the, to the short worked out really well. Uh, now it, it did require you to kind of be quick on the trigger and have your, your, your target preset. Um, but that one worked out, uh, you know, pretty well for those of you that were able to, to, to nab it. 
Uh, and then we got a reversal off of this area here too. So a uh, nice reversal off of here. Some of you may have chosen to take the long off of this area here. And what's great is that both trades worked out just fine. Uh, in the meantime, now that what that did is it eliminated the usage of this one. Um, now we uh, on uh, on this platform have rolled over uh, to the other contract uh, to our next contract. So uh, there's there's obviously a gap here in the uh, the adjustment. Uh, looking next at our bond markets. So looking at our bond markets, we have uh, still this area up here where we're looking for a potential reversal. Didn't quite reach it yesterday, so really nothing to do here, nothing to change. Uh, in our Aussie uh, area, so price hit our Aussie level and it has moved up. So if you are in that Aussie trade still, you may want to move your protective stop up uh, to lock in some of those gains. You've got a little bit of a fair price value area here. So uh, hopefully you are uh, you caught that little move and are doing your happy dance, doing your happy dance on a Friday morning. Uh, the Euro did not quite reach our area. I'm going to leave this Euro trade in place uh, as this one's continuing to run, but the Aussie did work out. And then our uh, Canadian dollar, look at this. Oh, this is what we call nicked by a tick. Um, you know, I talked about how this makes for a pretty decent profit target in the uh, Canadian dollar. And then all of a sudden, look at this. We almost get it. I mean, just miss it. Um, uh, and, and then it came back up. And uh, for a lot of you, that's going to stop you out at break even. Um, and by, by a lot of you, I mean uh, most of you. Because what happens is if you move your stop down to break even, price comes back comes up, gets you out of break even. And sometimes those trades just happen. Now, if you were able to catch, uh, you know, if you took some off the table as it as it ran down, great. Um, but I think for a lot of people, this is a good example of, you know, when this is the plan, follow the plan. Don't change the plan just because it it almost worked and, and got you, you know, you, you, you shouldn't have lost any money on it. Certainly should have been able to at least move your stop down to break even. Um, but follow the plan. So this Canadian dollar is a good example of, uh, of a, of a, a, you know, a winning trade that maybe have turned into a break even trade that, you know, and by the way, you still may be in it and it's still not a broken area, right? The trade's still not broken. If you didn't, if you never moved your stop, you're still in it and you, you know, it may roll down again. So, um, looking at our other markets. So our, uh, copper trade, it came back up, gave you another bite at the apple. Uh, and, uh, you know, you got two bites at the apple here in copper. One, Two, uh, as it has come down uh, from that area, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch this area to a um, a dashed line. So it, it, it you know it's still valid. You just have to it just has to give you a, a reason to get back in. Uh, the Japanese yen, we had identified our Japanese yen trade, and very much like our Canadian dollar, uh, it gave us the tease. Right, it almost got us in. Uh, price moved away from here. I will tell you at this point. Based on this little bit of basing that we have right here, another little bit here, I'm not as in love with this area as I was before. Um, and so it might make sense to switch it to a, uh, a dashed line and trim it up a bit. Um, and the reason I say trim it up a bit is because if you've got a, a, very, a fairly weak move into the area, then I'm going to want to decrease my risk overall. So... Uh, changes the, the complexity of the trade just a bit for those of you that are looking at that one. Uh, the Great British Pound didn't quite meet our entry. This one I still actually like better because we didn't quite come into it yet. But, you know, yesterday we found four demand, uh, four areas of, of buying opportunity in these currencies and only one met entry. But the one that met entry worked out pretty well. And that's really why we, uh, why I look at all four Um because you know you're going to have some that work better than others, and this Aussie worked out really well. So yesterday's, as far as yesterday's trades go, uh, the Aussie trade worked out uh, well for for a nice uh, little area. Canadian dollar trade almost met uh, target, and then gold definitely did meet target. So overall, I hope you had a pretty good day. Um, uh, one last thing that I want to highlight uh, is that I do uh, I did actually get an email yesterday. Uh, about somebody specifically asking about Bitcoin, um, asking about you know what what does Bitcoin look like right now? And so let's talk let's talk a little bit about Bitcoin. Um, and when I look at Bitcoin, I'm looking at the Bitcoin futures market here. And when I look at the Bitcoin futures market, uh, what I see is that we've got a pretty well defined base that's happening here um, on the daily time period. When I go to the hourly chart, I also uh, I can see that we've got obviously lower swing highs, lower swing lows. 
um, you know, Bitcoin, in my mind, could stem for a little bit of a breakdown. Now, the problem is, is that I don't have, using this Bitcoin futures chart, I don't have a tremendous amount of history. And obviously, the reason for that lack of history is that the futures market hasn't exist as, existed as long as it's been traded. So what I can do is, even if you don't, uh, you know, trade Bitcoin itself, and maybe you're you're using the futures or whatever you know method you're using to look at it, um, TradingView.com. Uh, I have nothing to do with TradingView, by the way. I just think that they have a really good charting service, uh, free charting service on the web that you can use. Um, oh, there we go. And, uh, and I like that I can go back in time and look a little bit more at Bitcoin. So going back and looking at Bitcoin, here's our, here's our picture of, uh, of Bitcoin uh, going all the way back to when it was under $1,000 and going all the way back even further, right? So um, when I look at, uh, at Bitcoin in the areas and potential, uh, you know, potential opportunities in it, I've got to look for those fair price value areas. Now, if you notice, this little fair price value area here that we bounced off of has, uh, has, has been pretty effective. I would look back to this area right here if we do break down on our daily time period from where we are today, which you, which uh, you know is is certainly not unfeasible. Um, you could have this uh, this area right through here as a uh, as a potential reversal point in Bitcoin. So. Um, this area right in here is actually more than a potential reversal. This is a great uh, picture of a reversal simply because you have old resistance. Uh, price broke through that resistance and then base, 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 fair price value area before then that straight up parabolic move that happened in December. So I think you're going to have uh, some support that, that comes into play right around $8,000 on the Bitcoin. And so... If you wanted to take a break out to the short side, you certainly could keep your stop pretty tight. Uh, you know, you you've I, and I will tell you full disclosure: I have never traded Bitcoin. It's something that I'm uh, I'm in the process of just getting a lot more familiar with. Uh, I, you know, I, I sh probably should. It's something I need to get in and uh, and and do. And um, props to a lot of guys out there that have been telling me about it for a long time that uh, that saw it way before I did. Um, but in the meantime, there's really no reason to go outside of your comfort zone if you're doing okay in, in what you're specializing in. But I at least wanted to highlight it from a technical perspective because uh, I had a couple of people that asked questions about it. So this is the area um, that I would look at as a potential reversal opportunity. I think you could get a breakdown out of here. Um, I'm a little bit more you know cautious simply because we've got both upper and lower wicks. Upper and lower wicks uh, tell me that there's really a lot of volatility in the intraday trading side. And so I'd need a, uh, I'd, I'd definitely want to do candle to candle style, which by the way, you've got a good, pretty good reversal on a candle to candle style as of today, because yeah, you know, here today we're lower than the prior day. So it's just something to keep in mind. Well, with that being said, uh, for those of you that, uh, that have any questions, feel free to send me an email, Chuck at IIEfinancial.com. Um, real quick plug, if you guys know anyone who's looking for financial advice or a non-traditional advisor, you know, even though you may be a, a short-term trader, maybe you know somebody that is, uh, that's not going to be a trader for themselves, but they wonder what it is that you do, uh, do me a favor, share them my information. Uh, we love to talk to people all the time. Or even if you are a trader and you, and you just don't want to manage your big bucket and you want somebody to help you with that, uh, give, us, uh, give us a holler. Uh, go to the website, iiefinancial.com or um, uh, shoot me an email, uh, or feel free to, uh, to call us uh, the numbers on the website. So thanks so much, everybody. I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. And until tomorrow, peace out. See ya.